Hello to you all, transport enthusiast here, and in this quick Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what kind of settings you should be looking at if you are running on a low spec PC or a PC that is in the minimum requirements range for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So the important thing to note is that obviously depending on what PC setup you have, uh, the settings may vary, but the trick with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 is you must find the sweet spot with settings that is compatible with your system. For example, if I change my settings uh, any bit higher than what I have currently got preset, uh, there will be there will be stutters and that sort of thing. And you are better off experimenting rather than doing the auto setup because the auto setup on this game will just automatically drive to lower medium, which doesn't give you the best performance. So Without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing to note is that the PC specs I am running on are an i5-3570 3.4 GHz CPU, a GTX 10K 32GB DRAM, 16GB of RAM which is DDR3, and then we also have a 1TB power drive, a uh, second, second power drive that we are running this game off. All of which, all of this information is in the description if you need for reference. Okay. So what we are going to do is if we go into options and then we want to go into general. So when we are in general, what we need to be looking at is our graphics. So I'm just going to go through all the settings I have for my setup. So my setup, uh, the CPU is slightly better than the minimum requirements of the i5-460. The GPU um, is running at 2GB via RAM which is the minimum requirements. And then also we have the uh, RAM which is running at the recommended. Now one thing to note is there's actually very, two very useful websites you can use to determine what kind of FPS you can expect with your game and what kind of performance you can expect. So the first one I would recommend using is Can You Run It? So I'll have the link to that in the description and on the second website as well. So it Can You Run It? If you input your system, the system specs, it will tell you if you will be able to actually run this at all in a playable fashion. The second you want to use is GameState, and this is quite useful if you go onto the Low VC Ultra tab, which is also in the description. So what you do there is if you input your graphics card, it will tell you what kind of FPS you can expect with low settings, with medium settings, medium graphical settings, high graphical settings, and of course ultra graphical settings. And that is a very useful uh, base tool you can use to determine based on that where your settings should be lying within. So for example. Uh, for my uh, for the GTX 1050, the two gigabyte the RAM that I'm running, the gameplay uh, of low VC also tells me that I should expect about 46 FPS on medium and then 23 FPS on high. So that probably means that I should not go near high settings overall because if I go to high settings, then what will happen is our uh, FPS will come to a rather unplayable 20 FPS. It's playable, but it's going to depend if you're on the ground, near the ground, it's not going to be the most enjoyable experience. The other thing to note is that whilst this is useful to tell you about how your um, GPU will perform, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 also uses the CPU as well, so CPU is also quite important and your RAM as well, it's all come, it all comes together, so if your CPU is on the lower end of things, you might not be able to reach the FPS settings uh, or the FPS marks listed on game space. So that's just one thing to bear in mind. So as you can see here, playing on display mode, our screen resolution is 1920 uh, by 1080, so it's the same as the monitor resolution. Uh, then this is the thing, this is custom, so don't you better stop going with custom. If you go with any of the presets, low uh, I would not advise playing this on low, it's, it's just feels like FSX and it really doesn't deliver a very enjoyable experience. So V sync if you're running running on uh, uh, so lower end GPUs especially, you want to have these things off. The, uh, so as you can see here, we have this off. Next thing you have is render scale. So I've set this to off function. So this is really in the medium range. Now obviously, if you have a weaker setup than I do, we will probably need to look at reducing this. Again, the trick with this is just a trial and error until you get a playable experience or one that satisfies your requirements. So actually, Aliasing, we have that set to GAA. Terrain level of detail, we've got this set to 90, so it's again within the medium range. Terrain vector data here is on medium. The only thing I have on high is buildings, and it's because uh, if you run everything on high settings, you'll get 23 FPS, but some stuff you put on high settings, 
you can't uh, get a better way to do it. So I have done some pie and it doesn't do the black and blue in you know, a two-minute fashion whatsoever. We have trees to feed them. Grass and bushes, you want to keep this below if you want a lot of decoration because if you pump this up to medium or the high, you will experience a performance hit. And it is just the grass and bushes, at, at low, at, even at low, they offer you, they offer you enough uh, detail to give you a somewhat realistic experience. So I would advise you to keep this at low unless your PC is more towards recommended requirements and things. So object level of detail again is the same as the grain level of detail, so we didn't need to it's a bit higher but it's the same range. Volumetric cloud. Uh, cla these clouds, if you increase them to medium or high, it will use up more of your system resources and could potentially lead to a decrease in performance. So you best off keeping this at low because at the end of the day the most important thing uh, is most people will be the scenery rather than the clouds, so I would advise keeping it low as well. Texture res resolution, you want to keep this at medium, if you bump this up to high you will experience uh, performance hits uh, if you're running on minimum requirements. Anti uh, an anisotropic filtering, we have that uh, two times, so that's the lowest uh, setting. Texture uh, super sampling, this is the lowest setting as well. You want to keep these at, at low for the best performance. It doesn't really impact the uh, visual appearance in a hugely uh, sig uh, significant manner. Our texture synthesis and our water waves are both in medium. If you're experiencing some performance issues, you could always turn down water waves to uh, low again. Water waves are not that necessary to your overall uh, simulation experience. Our shadow maps, this is set to uh, lowest as well. Terrain shadows are set to lowest again. This is, uh, what you want to do when you're playing on the specs are you want to basically make sure that the settings that are the graphical uh, detail that is most important, you have that important medium low and uh, medium or high and everything else that is not that important and does not have a huge impact on the overall experience, you want to keep that as low as possible for So for me, shadows aren't that important and they do kind of impact uh, performance, so keep those at low, even though the performance impact is probably not as huge. So all of these are low, windshield effects, this is a low again, uh, it's not really something that this is not something that particularly uh, interests me, so I can talk about this. Ambient occlusion. Again, you can, I think you can even turn this off if you want. Oh, I keep it low, but you know, um, you can turn it off as you wish. Reflections. You want to keep reflections as well. Reflections are tend to uh, cause performance issues the higher you uh, put them up. So if you put this on medium, you will probably experience some sort of performance. Hit. So reflections, you definitely want to keep those at low. Or if you're experiencing serious um, performance issues, even consider turning them off, they're not that uh, crucial to your uh, light experience, uh, your gameplay experience. Light shafts, you have this on low, uh, again, if you have a huge issue, just turn it off. This is loom, again, loom, I keep it on, but you turn it off if you really have issues. Depth of field, depth of field, uh, you, w you want to keep this uh, on medium, you don't really want to be going up high with medium and specs, and if you're having issues, you want to go to low. The only thing is if you go to low, you do kind of, uh, it does kind of compromise the overall experience simulator but um, if you can push it up to medium it does give you a better performance but I would uh, I'd not perform it it gives you a better ex playing experience but I do not recommend pushing this up to higher performance requirements. Lens correlation uh, correction again uh, you can turn this on it could potentially impact performance I don't really think uh, makes too much of a difference uh, in the overall game experience to keep it off. Lens flare again just turn this off if you're having issues uh, you can use generic uh, plane models, AI traffic, uh, and this is helpful, it just reduces the load of the CPU. Uh, so, if, especially if your CPU is within the minimum requirements range, you want to turn this to uh, low. You want to just turn this uh, on, because if you have this on, that basically means less CPU usage and less RAM usage. So if you're running on 8 gigabytes of RAM, you definitely shouldn't have this on. Um, now, multiplayer again, if you are having these sort of uh, issues on the CPU end or on the RAM end, if you're on 60 gigabytes of RAM, you want to have this on as well. But overall, uh, if you're playing multiplayer, you will potentially uh, experience uh, performance issues as well, depending on where you're playing, uh, depending on where you're loading, because the more aircrafts there are, the greater the load will be on the CPU and GPU. But guys, that's basically it here. This is, these are the settings I am using on my. Uh, setup which is oh basically is most for most part within the minimum requirements range but of course if you're having issues with RAM because I know some people have uh, they have
have a high spec CPU and GPU with around 8 gigabytes of RAM. The RAM prices are set to fall in the qu uh, fourth quarter of 2020 and even further in the first quarter of 2021. So what I do, what I would recommend is that you would potentially just uh, hold off on purchasing RAM now and purchase them down the line when prices are even cheaper. That's that's all there is to this. Um, you can experiment with the settings as you wish. It is trial and error. This will vary from the uh, setup to setup, but uh, as you can see here, these are all the different settings you can use and how they protect your performance. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to give it a like. And of course, you want to apply and save these. By the way, I'm going to discard because I might have accidentally picked something. But you want to save those. Uh, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like. Uh, for more Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 tutorials, uh, you know, uh, gameplay, that sort of stuff, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and never miss out on the virtual, next virtual flight. If you have any questions or you have any queries, that sort of thing, don't hesitate to comment down below and I will respond to most comments. And that is it. Until next time.